lot about the world. For the past four years, I've been teaching statistics at the University of Toronto, and I've found a parallel between how we approach a math problem and how we deal with real life challenges. So today I want to show you two math problems, and together we're going to transform something scary and unknown into something beautiful and achievable. Okay? So, do you guys ready to learn some math? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So problem number one. I'm going to write down an equation, and as I do, I want you to think about what it represents. Okay, here we go. Okay, now keep your answers to yourself. <laughs> and with a show of hands, who thinks that they know what this means? Okay, like pepper in here and there. Okay, so we're going to figure this out in three steps. So the first thing, something I really need to do, we're going to take a deep breath, okay? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to break this problem down into smaller parts, translate them, see which ones we don't understand, and get to the answer. Okay, so we're going to start with this big guy here. This is the Greek letter sigma. There it is. We use what is called sigma notation in math to describe summation, or adding a sequence of numbers together. We start with the first number, which we read on the bottom. One. And we continue adding until we reach the last number, which we read on the top. In this case, n. And in our equation, we're adding x values. Starting with the first x value, and continuing all the way until the last x value. In this case, the n value. Then in our equation, we're dividing by n the number of values we have. Okay? So, in other words, this is a really, really complicated, fancy math way of saying a simple procedure. Take all of your values, add them together, and divide by the number of values you have. Okay, what do we call this type of procedure? Huh? Average, right? This is the calculated average. Something I'm sure you're all very familiar with, right? So, what can we learn from this? Looking and understanding and seeing the big problem in a new language is really tough. And that's okay. Consider, for example, starting or transitioning into a new career. The future can look really uncertain, really daunting, but conquering big obstacles and getting where you need to be is not impossible. You just have to take small, simple steps, break the big equation down into smaller variables, and put them together in a way that makes sense. Okay? Cool? All right, you still with me? Yeah? Okay, here's the second problem. I love this one. It's a little more abstract. Okay? A few years ago, a friend of mine, Jonathan, came up to me and said, Hey, how many ways can you shuffle a deck of cards? I thought, uh, well, there are 52 cards in a deck. All right? And I started to work out every possible scenario, but there just, it was just too much to handle. So I thought to myself, what do we do when we have a challenge like this one? So I, I thought, mm, where do we start? Well, why don't we take this problem and simplify it, make it a little easier to chew, look for a pattern, and then maybe we can take that pattern and bring it back to the bigger issue. So, why don't we take 52 cards, make it easier to chew, what about rearranging three cards, something we can wrap our heads around. So, one, two, three cards. Okay, now let's look for a pattern. Let's suppose we have three ordered spaces to fill. One, two, three. In the first space, we have three cards, so we can put any one of them, we have three options there. Then, once we've put a card in the first space, we've got two cards left, two options in the second. And with a card in the first space and a card in the second space, we have one option left for the first, for the last card in the space there. So for each of the possibilities in the first space, one, two, and three, we have two options in the second space. And for each of those possibilities, we have one in the last space. Okay, now we can write out every possible scenario, and you'll count, and there are six ways to do this. The easier way is to multiply these numbers together. Three times two times one. That equals six. And we have a pattern. The number of ways to find the arrangements within an order of objects is by taking the number of objects we have, three, and then multiplying by smaller integers, three times two, all the way until one. And we, in math, we use a shorthand for this. It's called a factorial and we use an exclamation mark to write it. So, in this case, 3 factorial equals to 6. So, coming back to our original problem, how many ways can we rearrange a deck of 52 cards? The answer is 52 factorial. Or 52 times 51 times 50 and so on. Okay, any brave souls want to guess how big that number is? Just give it a guess. What? Really big. 
Really big. Like a million, two million? A trillion. Okay, a trillion. Good guess. I really urge you to try this on your phone as soon as you get out of here, not right now, or with the nearest emergency calculator, and you'll find that 52 factorial is equal to 8 times 10 to the 67th power. That's 8 followed by 67 zeros. And just to put that number into perspective, that's a trillion, 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 million times more than the number of sand grains on Earth. And the consequence of this is that every time you pick up a well-shuffled deck of cards, you are likely holding an arrangement that has never existed before. Which is pretty mind-blowing. Okay, so what can we learn from this about the rest of the world? So let me tell you a personal example of what it has taught me. I have an eight-year-old sister, and she recently started learning how to knit. And I have no idea how to knit. And I'm amazed by people who can. But what I do know is that you can't just make a scarf in one move. It's much more complicated than that. So when she comes to me looking for help, and I can't really help her, I know that we need to start by looking for a pattern in the complexity of the yarn. And if we, if we find that pattern, we can go back and work smaller and simpler stitches row by row until we've made a beautiful scarf. Okay, now I'll be honest with you. I was never really good at math, and that's why I spent so much time thinking about the approach. And I'm not suggesting that there's some stepwise solution to every difficult problem in life. But what I found is that breaking down big problems analytically, piece by piece, like we do in math, is really, really useful. So the next time you've got a big, scary problem in front of you, just think about calculating an average or shuffling a deck of cards and how we transform something unknown and scary into something achievable and even beautiful. Thank you very much.